Hello, my name is Mary Simmons and welcome to our show, Express Yourself. Today we will be teaching you an easy but beautiful Cape Cod Bay painting. Now, how many of you have never done a painting before? No big deal. We will teach you step by step. You do not need to have any artistic skill. You just want to pull up your chair, get some art supplies, and follow along with us. Now, let me explain what material we will be using today. We have our 16 by 20 canvas, but you can use any size that you like. 16 by 20, for me, it's fairly easy to use, and it's a great size to put up in your dining room or in the hallway. Now we've got some art brushes that I would like to show you. When you pick out paint brushes, we're using acrylic paint. Make sure you get the brushes that are meant for acrylic paint or acrylic slash oil paint. Do not get the watercolor brushes. They do not work as well. Now let me introduce you to our family of brushes. Every painting we use a different set of brushes. Today, we're gonna to be using this set now. I'm not going to teach you the formal art name, but I do have nicknames to make it easy for you to use. We've got some flat brushes here. Basically, they're flat square brushes. You can buy the large flat brush, which I call the daddy brush. Then you can get the little brother, which is just a smaller size. It's also a flat brush with that square edge. Now we also have round brushes. Round brushes are those pointy ones. You can get a medium sized one and a baby sized one. I call that the cousin and the little baby. Now just for fun, we have an extra brush that we use. This is not required, but I like it. It has a curved edge. This one we call the sister. It's almost like a flat brush, but the edges are curved. This is great for those round shapes or curved objects in any painting. So that's all for our brushes for today. Other materials that you can use are paper plates, a sturdy cup for your paint water and paper towel, a nice table to work with. Now, you can lay your canvas flat on the table, but I like to use easels. You can use a floor easel or one of those tabletop easels and pull up a chair, whatever you're more comfortable with. For today's painting, we will be using acrylic paint. Now you can buy those little tubes, but they're a little bit thick and harder to use. I like to buy those easy flow bottles. You can get one in this size. and they're very, very easy to pour on your plate. Make sure you only add a little bit, just a couple of drops, maybe a quarter size. You could always add more when you run out. That way you waste less paint. So I've got yellow, blue, green, white, and black. We always add white. white is like the most popular color. You're going to be using it to blend and make different highlights as well. Are you ready to get started with our painting? Okay. Now I've got my paint cup here. As I said before, you want to use a sturdy cup. That way you won't knock it over. Make sure you separate your drinking cup. This is the dirty paint water cup. And then we've got the paper plate filled with paints. We also have paper towels. You can have some extra on hand nearby. We are going to start with the daddy brush. Everybody grab your daddy brush. Now, before I get started, I like to play with my brushes a little bit. This helps me keep them in good shape. I make sure it's in a square. If I need to pinch it back into a square or make sure it's not too stiff, loosen it up so that it's ready to go. The first part we are going to do is the top part of the sky and work our way down. You see here it has a medium blue and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. This is an ombre effect. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. 
the plate's pretty small and I have ways to do our mixing and blending mostly on the canvas. I have tricks that I'll show you. First thing we're going to do is what I call the double load. We've got one side in blue. I'm touching the whole side. Don't be cheap with the paint. Get one whole side nice and covered. Flip it over and the other side in white. So you have a double-sided brush, white and blue. Now using these two colors, we're going to go back and forth holding the wide side. I'm going to go all the way up to the edge, back and forth, maybe five to ten times until it's nicely blended together. Now when you run out of paint, just reload your brush. I'm going back and forth. Now a lot of times people stop blending too early and then it looks a little bit streaky and the colors are not mixed. Just keep going and going until it's smooth. Now I have a nice medium to light blue happening here. I'm going to go ahead and reload my brush, but this time I'm going to do a little bit less blue and more white. So I've got half of blue on one side, flip it over, and the other side has a generous amount of white. I'm going to go directly below that first stripe that we did, but I would like you to overlap it maybe a quarter of an inch so that it's blended together and it doesn't look too stripy. Now it should be lighter than what you first did. You can always dip a little extra white and make sure that it's lighter. Do not add water while you're painting unless I mention it because water will change the painting it will change the technique. So I will be letting you know when it's time to add water. Still keeping the brush dirty and keeping it dry. I'm not adding water yet. So with the dirty brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip into white on both sides. I'm not adding any more blue. There should be enough blue left over inside the brush. And I'm going to go below that stripe that we just did. And remember, you want to overlap it about half an inch or a quarter of an inch so that it's blended together. Now, you may notice I'm going back and forth so many times. Your arms might to get a little tired, but that's some good exercise. The more you do it, the better it blends. Now, I'm going to go down till I'm almost halfway. I'm going to continue with just white and no more blue. Now one thing to keep in mind that acrylic dries pretty fast. So sometimes it's a good idea to work quickly. Now if it dries, you might have to reload your brush with some more paint. I don't recommend using water just yet. Now I'm going to go all the way up and blend it in before the top part of the painting starts to get dry. So some of that light blue gets blended into the darker blue. Some of the darker blue gets blended into the lighter blue. And using the same side to side stroke, you do not want to stop halfway because then you'll get these water marks. You want to go all the way across to get a nice, smooth, consistent blend. 
Now, if you have a little bit of streaking, that's okay. I call it character. It's always good to add a little bit of character to your paintings. Okay, now it's time to clean our brush. There are different ways to do it, but the way I do it is I literally stomp the bottom of the cup. Now, it might seem to be a little rough with the brushes, but that's why I do the reshaping after I get that brush beat up, take it out, and use a paper towel to get the extra paint out or the water out, and also reshape your brush back into a nice, sharp square. The next color we're going to do is my favorite color the aqua, jade, turquoise, teal, tea foam green, whatever you want to call it. I love those colors. We're going to go down here. Basically, we're going to do what we did in the sky, but in reverse. We're going to start with a dark green, medium green, light green, and then it will disappear into the sky. And that will give it that 3D perspective. First thing we're going to do is grab that daddy brush. We're still using it. Both sides of the brush in dark green. Now I'm going to use a generous amount. And we're going to go to the bottom edge. We're going to use the same long side to side stroke using the wide side of the brush. Back and forth all the way down on the edge. So we have this dark green first, and now we're going to brighten it up using that double load with white and green. So we're still le leaving it dirty, no water yet. One side in white, a generous amount of white, the other side in green. I use this technique a lot. Back and forth, make sure you overlap that first stripe about a quarter of an inch so it's nicely blended in. Also, you don't want to stop halfway. As I mentioned before, you don't want those watermarks. Smooth it out. Now, if you run out of paint, just reload your brush with some white and green. I'm going to get this blended in some more. Just for a rule of thumb, I say, Go back and forth at least 10 times. Now, I like to use my hand to measure different parts of my painting so I know how much I want to do. This first part here is about four fingers. That's about as high as you need to go. Now, we want to make it much, much brighter as we get up closer to the sky. So I'm leaving the brush dirty. I'm going to soak it up in white. There's plenty of green left over. And you go back and forth. Again, make sure you overlap about half an inch and blend it in. Now this part, this light green part, I think is just absolutely beautiful. It's a very nice calming color. You do not want to have too much streaking. You want this part to be pretty smooth so it feels relaxing. Sometimes you might have a stubborn part of your canvas that repels paint. All you need to do is a little wiggle wiggle is what I call it. You just get into that spot that's resisting paint. Turn it to the skinny side of your brush and wiggle wiggle until it's all covered up and then go ahead and blend it in. Now with the remaining space here, we're going to do just white and hopefully it'll get even brighter.
putting on some extra white as I get close to the horizon line. I want to fill in that space where the sky and the water meet with some white. You can use a wide side of your brush or turn it to the skinny side. And get that space covered up. Now I'm not going to go back and correct any streaks or markings that I have here. Often I'll tell people in my classes to park it and leave it. So once you have that background nicely set up, you're going to take a short break, five to ten minutes, we'll be back and we'll get started on the horizon line and the clouds. So go ahead and wash your daddy brush and take a short break. Now that we've let our painting background dry for a while, we're going to get started with the next step. We've got some clouds, but before we do clouds, we need to establish where the horizon line is. Now what brush are we going to use? Let me show you here. We've got that curved brush, which I call the sister. You can use a flat brush or a round brush, but if you have this curved brush, it's a wonderful tool to use. So I'm going to get started with this brush. The first thing we're going to do is white paint, but as I said before, where is the horizon line? As I said before, we measure with our hand. For this part, I want you to stretch out your hand make a big number five, and from the bottom of your canvas, using a little bit of white paint, make a little white dot at the pinky. This is just a mental note, so you know where the horizon line is, and that will help you establish where the clouds are going to be. So after I make that little dot, I'm going to go ahead and soak up my brush in white, both sides, roll it in, whatever you'd like. So now it's covered in white. We're going to get started with the clouds. Now, I do not want to see those third grade puffy clouds. We're going to add a little bit more depth and dimension and character. We've got the little bump, the big bump, and as my little son calls it, the bunny rabbit. We've got the body here, the face, the ears, and the cotton tail. This is just a general shape to help you when you're painting. Often when you're looking at clouds in the sky, you might see different images as they're going by. So here we've got little bump, big bump, bunny rabbit with the face, ears, and the tail. So I'll go ahead and show you how to break it down bit by bit. So we've got that horizon line here. We're going to go up about two or three fingers above it. And that is where we start that little bump for. I'm going to make a straight line across. Just about one hand. And when I make the bump, I do not want it to have a perfect curve. You want it to be a little bit irregular, fluffy, organic, and you're going to use some rolling strokes. Earlier when we did the painting, we did long side to side stroke. Now we're going to do rolling. Also, make sure it's very gentle. You're barely touching the canvas, very little pressure, rolling and rolling. And go ahead and fill it in, in the middle. I'm also going to soften up that space at the bottom so that it's not perfectly straight. So we've got cloud number one. I'm not overthinking it. There's a lot of other colors and details we're going to add to it. Put that shape in, leave it, move on. Let's get some more white for that second bump. This one should be a little bit higher. 
You want to stop short of that darker blue part of the sky with that curved stroke. Go ahead and fill it in with white. When you fill it in, use that rolling, curving stroke. Make sure you're not using too much pressure against the canvas. If you push too hard, it will actually start to erase the paint off. Gentle. Getting some more white paint. Go ahead and fill it in. Now you might notice it's a little bit transparent and it's not that solid. I did a gentle and you see through the paint a little bit and that gives it a natural effect. See those details? You do not want to cover it up and make a solid white bump. Those soft areas peeking through will actually help your painting. Now we're going to go on to that funny looking bunny rabbit cloud. So I'm going to break it down into body parts of the bunny just to help you. First, we've got that thumper foot. We've got that thumper foot. Again, this is not to scale. This is just a fun mental note to help us with the shape. After we have that thumper foot, we're going to go ahead and do that big body of the bunny. Same rolling stroke with white paint. So I'm filling in the body of the bunny. And now we're going to do the bunny face. And the bunny ears, the main goal that you want is to make sure this cloud reaches the top of the canvas, so you want to make it big enough. And then with that little leftover space, we can make the cotton tail. So we've got Little bump, big bump, and bunny. Those three cloud shapes. And now I'm going to help you add some shading and colors to the cloud to make it more three-dimensional. You want to use soft rolling strokes, as I mentioned before, because if you become too rough or put too much pressure on, it will become too solid or we'll start to take paint off. Now we're going to mix some light blue. I am going to mix it on the plate instead of on the canvas. I'm going to dip just the tip into that blue, find a corner on my plate. So take a look. We've got a little corner of that blue and then a big heaping scoop of white. Blend it in. You want to have a nice baby blue. If it looks like a medium blue, add more white to it. Now, as you notice, when I'm mixing colors, I'm mixing it in a small area. You can scoop, flip, or roll. Do not spread it. It gets bigger and bigger, and it starts to touch the other color. Keep it small. It also keeps it moist. If you spread the acrylic paint out, it will dry out. So now I have that light baby blue here, and we are going to do the middle section of the clouds. We're going to leave the top part nice and bright. We're going to go to the lower or middle section. Same soft rolling stroke following the shape of your cloud. I'm going to go ahead all the way to the bottom. Do the second cloud, same way.
Now, when you get to the bunny, it gets a little bit confusing as to where you're going to put the shape. So we're going to go ahead and do the spine first. See that spine here? The back of the bunny, that's where we're going to put the shade first. So I'm going to start at the back of the head, down the spine, underneath the bunny, a little bit on the ear, and underneath the cotton tail. Now if you want to make an even darker edging, we can add a little bit more blue to make a medium blue. So I'm using that leftover light blue that I mixed earlier and I'm putting a dip of that darker blue into it and you should make a deeper shade. So I did a little bit of this and I put it right into here. This should be more of a medium cornflower blue. This is going to go along the edge, the bottom edge, to make it a little bit dark. So I'm using these curved rolling strokes. I'm not doing full circles anymore. I'm doing half curves. We're going to go along the back of the bunny spine as well. Make sure you don't cover up that light blue, just go on the edge of it. Now here's the cool thing. If you don't like how much blue you're using, you could always add a little white to it and soften it up. So I'm going to do a little touch up with white. Just to soften it up. Now I want you to find that horizon line that we had before, where that white dot is. I'm going to scrape off some of the extra paint I have on here. Scrape it off. Use the edge of your plate. So there's still some paint on, but it's not as clumpy as before. And on that horizon line, we're going to add just a little bit of light blue, very pale very soft application, gentle strokes, barely touching the canvas. The canvas will still pick up a lot of the paint from your brush, but I'm barely placing it. Now this part, you are allowed to use water. So I'm doing a tiny dip into that cup of water, just a little bit. I want to make sure it's not dripping. And I'm going to go ahead and stroke that water over that light blue part of the horizon just to smooth it out. Now when you add water, the paint becomes a little bit transparent. It's called a wash technique. So we're going to go ahead and wash the brush using that stomping. Dry it with a paper towel. Make sure there's no blue left over on your brush because we're switching to yellow. Now when you add blue and yellow together, you end up with green. So we're going to do a dip of yellow paint. I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much. I'm going to scrape it off. We're going to do some highlights in the cloud and then some glowing light along the horizon. So at the cloud, I want you to do the very edge using the rolling, just a little hint of sunlight, a little warmth.
along the belly and the face, front of the ear, the top of the cotton tail. And using the same yellow, right above that horizon, we're going to do some yellow streaks. Let's give it some warmth to the sky. I'm using the wide side of my brush. Add a little bit of water. So that it's transparent. And that should brighten up our sky. I'm going to clean that. And we are now going to grab the little brother brush. That's a smaller flat brush. Make sure that it's ready to go. It's not too stiff. I'm going to dip it into water, just the tip, and I'm going to pinch it. This is a little bit different than what we do I'm going to pinch until I have a sharp, sharp edge. Sometimes this is easier for fine detail than the baby brush. If you notice that your lines are getting thicker or if the paint's getting clumpy, it's time to reshape your brush. You can use your finger or you can use a paper towel. Now that I have that sharp edge, we're going to go ahead and make that land way back on the horizon. We're going to mix a few colors together. I'm going to add a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and then a pinch of white. So you still want to have a dark, dark shade of blue-green, but you're adding just a hint of white so that it's not too dark. So now that I have my blue-green, I want to make sure the edge is still sharp. If it's not sharp, you can squeeze it with a paper towel or scrape the edge of your plate. Now using that sharp edge, make sure the skinny line is going this way. You're not using the wide side anymore. You want to use the skinny side. Find the top of that horizon line and just make a line going across four or five inches on each side. Make sure that it has a point at the end. You should have a big gap in the middle. I'm adding some paint and now we're going to add a little bit of land. It should not be bigger than an inch, maybe even half an inch is enough. And gradually using subtle rocky bumps. Go down lower and lower until it comes to a point. You can even skip the point to make it sharper. Once you have that, you can fill it in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but make sure that we don't have twins. You want a little bit of variation. You can make this guy a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Now, I didn't need a lot of paint for these two parts. It's dark enough, you just need a little coverage here and there. 
Now with the leftover paint on your brush, you can add a little bit to the bottom left and right corners. I'm going to do a little streaking using the skinny side. Just on the corner for some detailing. Reflective water line. I'm leaving the middle bare. I'm just doing the corners. I also don't want to make the line the same. They're a little bit random, short, medium, long. We're going to do a little bit of shading under each landmass. If you look here, we have that tiny little landmass, and right below it, we're going to do a tiny bit of shading in the water. There's not much paint left on the brush. Just go ahead and streak in a hint of that blue-green on the left, and the same on the right. Just clean that little brother brush. Let him soak in the water. Now we have our sky. We have our clouds. We have that warm glow, the land mass, and the water. We're going to add some detailing to the water and also the sailboat. So you can take a couple of minutes to let everything dry before we do the sailboat. Now that we're back to do the next part, you do want to have three brushes that we're going to be using for the boat. We've got the little brother. This is good for those sharp edges and also fill in some wider areas. You've got the little cousin which you can use to fill in and then the baby brush. Some people are more comfortable using the baby brush for those fine lines than the brother. Either one is good. So you want these brushes clean, dried, shaped and ready to go. First thing I'm going to start with is the little brother. Now we're going to do the drawing of the sail. We're going to start with the bottom of the boat. If you look here at the plate of paint, I'm dipping just an itty bit into white. Then I'm going to scrape it off so that it's not clumpy. We're going to do a little bit of drawing with white, and then we're going to fill in with color. Now, where is the boat going to be placed? Find that gap in front of the bunny, in between those land masses. You want to have it somewhere in this area. So line it up here. And the bottom of the boat is going to be in that medium light green section here. And it's only going to be about this wide. Make the letter L with your hand. And that helps you figure out how big your boat's going to be. I'm just going to make a straight white line across. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And on the side of each boat, we're going to come down at an angle. This is only about half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And then a slight curve, almost straight line at the bottom. So now we have our basic shape for the boat. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with white. Even though we're going to be adding color, Sometimes we do a little bit of a primer so that the colors pop out better. So let's fill that in with just a thin layer of light paint. Now while we let that dry, before we add any color to it, we're going to go ahead and do that post. Now, this is the part where people start to look at me funny. This post 
this pole goes all the way up to the blue sky. Now often people want to make it small and short, but that's not actually proportionate. It goes way up past the clouds and touches the sky. So we're going to move towards the front of the boat using the skinny side of the brush, not the wide side. Keep it perpendicular to the canvas so that it's nice and straight. And without pushing it too hard, just make a straight line going up and stop when you hit the darker blue part of the sky. If you need to repeat to make it a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker actually, you can add a little bit more white. Now, if you have a little bit of a wobbly line, don't worry about that. Remember, this is a painting. This is not photography. Anything that's a little bit bumpy, out of place, or a little accidental streak, just gives it character. It makes it a nice, beautiful painting. Now we have our first pole. We're going to go ahead and make those lines. Now this part you do want to make skinny. It starts from the top of the pole and it goes all the way to the middle of the boat. A very slight angle. Now I'm going to go even lighter, even gentle, I even have my pinky out. Sometimes I say that using a pinky is kind of like a brake. When you're driving, you pull the brake a little bit. Now with painting, having that pinky up takes the pressure off the canvas and makes sure you don't paint too hard. So very gently, using that sharp edge, I'm going to make a skinny white line that stops in the middle of the boat. Now we're going to go ahead and make this sail part here. The sail is actually down, so it's rolled up across this bar. We're going to go ahead and make that bar at a very slight angle. You see how it's about a quarter of an inch or a half an inch from the top of the boat. And then it keeps going at a slight angle and it stops before the end of the boat. So I'm going to go up about half an inch, a slight angle, and just stop short. Now I do want to make this thicker, so I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch thick. Add some more paint. Now from the end, the edge of this, we're going to add one more line, skinny line that goes to the top of the pole. So I'm going to clean the white off a little bit. The bottom of the boat should be a little bit dry. So we can go ahead and fill it in with that bright yellow. Sometimes we use a yellow-orange or a neon-orange. I'm going to go ahead and fill in. The boat with the yellow. What I would like you to do is put a little bit of reflection into the water directly under the boat. Maybe two or three skinny lines. Do not make it wider. It needs to be just a little bit smaller. I'm using the skinny side. They're not touching. There's a little gap. Just a little reflection into the water.
Now you can use the round brushes, the little sister or the baby. I'm going to go ahead and use that little sister and fill in the sail part with some blue. You can use dark blue or a medium blue. I'm going to go ahead and dip into that darker blue and put it into the medium blue we made earlier. You do want to make sure that it's darker than the sky. Go ahead and fill in that sail with nice medium blue. We're also going to put a little bit of blue detailing into the boat itself. We're going to start with the front. Put a blue thick line in front of the pole. And then a thinner line for the rest of the boat. So it's thicker in the front and skinnier in the back. You can also add a little bit of reflection into the water. Make sure you go past those yellow lines. Drop below it a little bit. And we're going to do a mirror effect. Now for these next steps, you can use the brother or the baby. Just for fun, I'm going to grab the baby. And we're going to add some detailing to the boat. I'm going to dip just an itty bit into black. This is going to go on the bottom edge of the boat. It helps make the boat pop out because these are all very pale, sutter color. So I'm going to go ahead put a little bit of black on the bottom edge of the boat, only where it touches the water. You can use a little brother edge or the baby. So if you look close here, there's a black edge on the bottom of the boat. I'm also going to put a black edge on the bottom of the sail. Now when I use the baby brush, it's a little bit wobbly for me. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the brother for the last part. Make sure I pinch it so that it's sharp again. We're going to dip into black, scrape it off so that you don't have too much. Do you remember that pole that we did here? You can't see it very well. It's white on white, so we're going to add a little black to make it pop. We're going to go right next to it. We're not going to go on it. We're going to go right next to it on the edge. So you should still see the white line. It's just a white line next to a black line. And that helps the pole pop up from the water and from the sky. Now there are a couple more details you can add. You can add the reflection of the poles and the line into the water using white. Just a few subtle lines. You don't have to get too detailed. I'm going to do one line straight down, only about maybe a quarter of the size. Very little. And then just a little from the other two lines, just a hint. 
using the leftover white on your brush, you can add some more reflection into the water. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the top of the boat, just above the blue line, for one final touch. Now we have our painting pretty much complete here. We've got the sky, the clouds, that glow, that still water, and the sailboat. This painting is called Cape Cod Bay because usually bay waters are pretty still. However, the coloring is a little different than our traditional Cape Cod scene, but sometimes it's fun to make things a little brighter. Now for your signature, a traditional way is to use a tiny brush and just put your signature in the bottom right corner. Or if you want to get creative, you can put your initials on the boat whatever your boat name is. So I'm going to go ahead and do my initials in white, M, S. But now I have my signature done. Now when you are finished painting, make sure you always leave your paint brushes in water. The paint dries pretty fast. You can leave it overnight and clean it later if you want to, or you can wash it right away. You can use soap, dish soap. We have brush cleaner soap, anything you want. And then clean it in soap. Massage it. When you have soap, make sure you massage it. And then dry it and it, we shape it and it's good to go for another day. So thank you for watching our show, Express Yourself, and we can't wait to have you back again and show you what our next painting is.